just have two or three people that are working together, they don't trouble to create an entity, that's called a general partnership. With these, you actually have to file documents with the Secretary of State, and you are an actual business entity. And there are actually a ton more out there, but these are the big ones, okay? These are the big ones. So this is entities under state law. Um, what about under federal law? And I'm actually, there is a little bit of a discussion on this on page seven in your lecture materials on entity classification. So you might want to thumb to that while I'm lecturing about this because, you know, it makes sense to go ahead and talk about this here and we'll go back to the rest of the material. So state law versus federal law. So just because you create one of these entities under state law, that does not in any way tell you, um, I guess another thing I'll put up here is a sole proprietorship. So sole proprietorships are also not an entity. It's just someone who has a business. Um, you probably learned about sole proprietorships and individual income tax, right? This is reported on Schedule C. These are just people who own a business, they're the only owner of it, they don't create an entity. So with these two right here, I mean, there's really no actual entity, okay, under state law, usually. That's what people mean. Sole proprietorship, maybe there could be, but not usually. So let's talk about choice of entity for federal law. When we say federal law, we're talking about tax law. What are the options under tax? Well, whatever, it, people get very confused on this, attorneys and accountants alike. Just because you have an entity created under state law, that does not actually mean that it is um, a certain type of entity under federal law. We have what's called check the box rules. These are found in um, code section 301.7, actually these are regs, 301.7701-1-2-3, and I think there are even a few more after that. Uh, you, some of you have probably heard me say before that the number to the right of the dash doesn't actually mean anything. Um, and the number to the left of the decimal is um, whatever, like, kind of whatever subtitle of the code that we're in. So, um, let's see. There we go. If you're looking at the back, of your code and regs book. Now I will warn you, the version that I have right now that I'm lecturing on is the 2016 through 17 edition. The version that you have is the 17 through 18th edition, which at the time of this lecture, which is in April, that edition has not come out. So I can't really say page such and such because the edition that you have right now is different from the edition that I have. But if you look at the back of the book, um, on, like I said, on my book, it's on page 853, probably not the same as yours, but this is in the code and regs book. This is where these check the box regulations start. And the check the box regulations are fairly new. Um, they have not been around forever, but um, with these regs, it says classification of organizations for federal tax purposes. All right. So to be a requirement, under these, under these uh, regulations, like I said if you go to page seven in your lecture material, 
it discusses the different options under the check the box rule. So I'm going to right here tell you what the different options are and then we'll discuss how you get there. You can have a disregarded entity. There's an option. Option one. Option two is a partnership. Option three is a corporation. Or a C corporation, I should really say. Okay. And then option four is an S corporation. For tax purposes, these are the only entities that you can have. That's it. These are your options. There are tons of state law entities out there, but for tax purposes, these are the options. Okay, great. So how do we determine which entity we are under tax purposes? So the first question that's addressed is, is the corporation an eligible entity? So the first question I always ask when doing, dealing with check the box rules is, do we have an eligible, an eligible entity? I'm trying to find exactly where this is in the regs that gives you this list. Okay. It's in 301-7701-2B. Dash 2B. So what this list is, is basically a list of non-eligible entities. So if you are not on this list, you are eligible. Okay? So this gives a list of non-eligible entities. Some of the entities that are listed here, here's the big one. An entity, this is the first one, B1, a business entity organized under a fake federal or state statute if it is described as incorporated or as a corporation. Okay, so what this means is if you have a corporation under state law, this is going to make a little bit more sense in a minute, but if you have a corporation under state law, that is a non-eligible entity. This list is also called, not in the regs, but in the real world, we call these per se corporations. Why we call it that is because if you are in this list, you have to be a corporation for tax purposes. It doesn't, you don't get the option of check the box. No check the box. So if you are a non-eligible entity, your option is only corporation. That's it. These are your options. Now, you may have the option to be in an S Corp, but your options are either C, sometimes only C, maybe sometimes S Corp. But you are a corporation. And the first one and the biggest one on here is if you create a corporation under state law, you are a corporation for federal income tax purposes. Period. You don't have any other options. Um, some of the other ones that are listed on here, an insurance company, um, a business entity owned by a state or political subdivision, some foreign entities. <clears throat> There's actually a um, list here in the code. This is not a class on federal income, on a international tax, but there is a list in the regs of different foreign entities 
that are also considered to be per se corporations. I'm trying to look for it. I don't see it. It may not be. This is an abridged version of the code and regs, so it may not actually be in here. Uh, it's not in here. That's okay. We, we don't we don't need to know it for this class. But just know if you're dealing with a foreign entity, it may be under this list. It says it is a per se corporation, which means no options under check the box. It is a corporation. Um, so honestly, these are the big ones. Banks, also another one listed on here, is a state chartered business conducting banking activities. So that is also a um, kind of a big one. Banks, insurance companies, insurance companies, banks. All right. So what this means is, all right, so let's say we get past this and we determine, all right, well, we don't have a corporation under state law. We're not conducting banking or insurance activities. We don't meet any of these um, of this list here in the regs. So that means we are an eligible entity. Okay, great. So if, we're, if we are an eligible entity, what's going to be our options? Well, there are default rules. So I'm going to erase this right here. There's not actually a lot of room to write in here. Okay, so if we do not have an eligible entity, now we need to turn to the default rules. With these default rules, if you have one owner, so there is only one owner of this company, and it is, and it is an eligible entity, it is defaulted as a DRE, disregarded entity. What does that mean? The tax code treats it as if it doesn't even exist for tax purposes. All of the income and losses and deductions flow up um, on that person if it's an individual. Okay, it may not be an individual, it may be a corporation, but flows up into their tax return. So if we're talking about an individual, it would all be on Schedule C, right? Um, now, if we have one owner, and they're not happy with being a, di a disregarded entity. Now we have the check the box rules come in. These check the box rules say they can choose to be taxed as a corporation, but they have to make an election. The form to make an election is Form 8832. Okay, this is the check the box form. I encourage you to take a look at it when you have some time. There's actually a lot of ways to screw this form up. I was working at PwC and we were working on a very large deal and there was another big four accounting firm on the deal, I'm not gonna say which one, and we came to find out that they had actually screwed up their check the box forms for about four of the entities and the reorganization. So um, we had to call them basically and get them to fix it really quickly, which they were able to fix it in time, but it could have been a huge catastrophe. So these are big four accounting firms that had filled out these forms incorrectly. Um, <clears throat> and another default rule, okay, so this is default rule number one. Another default rule, what if you have two owners? Then the default rule is you're treated as a partnership for tax purposes, or you can check the box to be taxed as a corporation. So let's go through some examples. Let's say we have an LLC under state law and it has one owner. Is this LLC an eligible entity? Yes. It is not a corporation under state law. It's not doing insurance or banking or any of the other things in the list. Now it has one owner. How is that going to be taxed without it doing anything else? A disregarded entity. 
Now, if they decide we want to be taxed as a corporation, they have to file an election and choose to be taxed that way. And they would check the box to become a corporation. Um, and what about if this LLC has two owners? All right, they have two owners. That's interesting. Um, now what? Well, they are defaulted as a partnership for federal income tax purposes, but they can choose to be taxed as a corporation. All right, so now we see, okay, so LLCs can be taxed as either a disregarded entity, a partnership, or a corporation. That's three out of the four options for federal income tax purposes. So if a client comes into your office and you say, how are you taxed? And they say, I'm an LLC. You say, let me see your tax returns. Because I have had this happen so many times. Clients come in, they have no idea how they're taxed. No clue. You have to look at the documents. And more than that, if they have checked the box, you need to look at that check the box election and make sure it's valid. Okay, so remember I said that there were four different options. There's a C-Corp, an S-Corp, a disregarded entity, and a partnership. How do we get to be an S-Corp here? Okay, well, an S-Corp is basically a corporation that makes an election to be an S-Corp. So with an S-Corp, I know this is ridiculous, I have hardly any room. S-Corp is a corporation under state law, well, not necessarily under state law, but it is a corporation that elects to be treated as an S. All right, great, excellent. So let's say another example. Let's say we have a corporation under state law. Let's say we have XY Corp created in Texas. XY Corp, is that an eligible entity? No, so we have no options here, done. Nothing we can do right here. But they might be able to elect S status. This is not a check the box rule, okay? This is actually its own separate subchapter of the code, which we will get to at the very end of the semester. So if we have a corporation under state law, if they meet the qualifications, which we'll get to later, they can choose to be taxed as an S-Corp. When people talk about S-Corps, I want to make sure you understand this. There is no such thing as an S-Corp for tax purposes. It does not exist. S-Corps are only a figment of federal income tax. When we talk about partnerships under federal income tax, yeah, there are partnerships under state law. Talk about corporate, corporate treatment under federal income tax. Yeah, there are corporations under state law. So that can be a little bit confusing. When people say, I'm a corporation, does that mean you're taxed as a corporation? You know, maybe, maybe not. So um, there are always additional questions to ask. And an S Corp is only a figment of the tax code. Honestly, so is a disregarded entity. Those are two things that do not exist under state law, only under tax law. All right, so if we have an S-Corp, this is a corporation that elects to be an S-Corp. But there's one other way that an entity could be an S-Corp. This is kind of the first way. The second way is a little bit more interesting. Now we have, with the second option, we have an LLC under state law that checks the box So if, they, if we have an LLC that checks the box, whether they have one owner or two, they are now a corporation. Not under state law. Under state law, they are still an LLC. But under tax purposes, okay, they have checked the box, they are now a corporation, and then they make an S election. So we have two steps in the process. And let me tell you, if you ever have anyone that comes into your office and this is where they were, they were an LLC 
who then checks the box, who then makes an X selection, S selection, the first thing you need to say is, why don't you let me see those forms, okay? Because now we have two potential ways to screw it up, okay? So, um, and the big problem, and I've had this happen, is they didn't screw up their check the box form, but they screwed up their S selection form, which means what type of entity are they? Ooh, corporation, two levels of tax, and they think they have one level because they think they're an S corp. Always the first question, let me see those forms because there's a good chance, fair chance, that there's a problem with them. These forms can be a little bit difficult to fill out. Okay, so those are the check the box rules. I know we skipped a little bit in the chapter, okay? So I'm going to take a little bit of a pause. This equipment that we're using caps out at about 45 minutes, okay? So I'm going to pause and um, start a new video for the rest of chapter one, okay?